Jesus, we just thank you for the supremacy of Christ, that you are the name above all names. You're above every disease, above every sickness, every plot of the devil. Jesus, you're above it all. You're above COVID. You're above the schemes of hell. Jesus, you're highly exalted, and you're at the right hand of the Father, And it says that you put all things under your feet. And so we just thank you. We exalt you in this place, Jesus, above every name, above every idol, above every religion. Jesus, you're the only true and living God. And you're alive and well. And you're on your throne. And it says earth is your footstool. And so, Jesus, we just thank you. We just say it's all about you. We just, we just point all of our focus to you, to your presence that's here. And we thank you that your presence is here right now, that there's no separation, there's no distance, that your name is I Am. And so, God, we just release your healing presence in this place for physical pain to be healed, for emotional Um, just anything. It says the Father knows what we need before we ask you. And so, Father, we ask that you would just give to your children what we need even before we ask. Lord, so we just thank you. Yeah. We have some exciting things happening. I mean, just to give a couple quick testimonies, we were at game night here on Friday and, um, you know, just playing games like, I don't know, cards and stuff, nothing too spiritual. And we had some pizza over there, and it was like pepperoni and from Costco. And Liam comes over, and he's, what, like 13? He's, yeah. And he goes, I want to have pizza so bad, but he's allergic to gluten and, and dairy, so he can't have it. But he goes, I, need, I want pizza so bad. And so I prayed that he would get healed right there. And then so he went and told his mom and said, yeah, I, I got healed. I was even sweating. I was sweating. I, I got really hot. Can I have the pizza yet? And she goes, okay, go for it. And he got healed. He hasn't needed to have, you know, ever since. I mean, so. And then, you know, so. The Lord was at game night even, you know, even. And then Ava, did you get healed too? What happened with you? Oh, oh really? Did you want to share just for a second? Yeah, go for it. You got it, girl. You got it. Okay, this is my first time, so I'm like super nervous. Um, so I, I haven't like gotten to eat dairy or gluten in a long time because well actually not that long (laughs) like eight months because like my like not like stomach issues but like pain in my stomach from like dairy and gluten like it hurt my stomach really bad so um it like uh like it hurt me and after like we didn't like eat I didn't eat gluten or dairy like it was like gone like the pain was gone and then like last Wednesday I'm pretty sure um Daniel he was like 
okay, anybody with stomach issues, like, hold your stomach and, like, we'll pray for you. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is my chance. So I, like, <laughs> I hold in my stomach and, like, he prayed. And then I told my mom when we were come, going home, I was like, okay, I got prayed for. So do you think tomorrow I can try some gluten? And she was like, sure, I guess so. And then I ate gluten and ever since, like, I can eat gluten and dairy. <laughs> We just pray that anybody that has any stomach issues right now, that they'll just get healed 100%, and that anybody with other, like, body issues or, like, leg pain or arm pain or any, like, any stuff like that, mm -hmm. that it will just be healed and that they'll just eat whatever that's wrong with them or... Like, just anything in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Come on. So, yeah, last Wednesday was rad. So, I literally had my last dollar in my wallet, and he's, like, having us pray through our wallets. He's like, hey, like, my bank account was, like, negative. And I'm like, all right, like, and he's like, we're going to pray. Like, first he prayed through our heart, like, Lord, that our hearts would, like, overflow to other people. And then that our wallets would overflow so we can be generous. And I was like, all right. I put literally my last negative dollar, if you can call it that. I put it in. Literally, the offering thing gets this far. My phone goes, bing. And there was money in my account. I was like, what? So praise the Lord. Or I'll pray over the offering. So let's do that. Grab hold of your wallet or whatever you got, your phone, if that's how you do it. Huh? So let's just pray through that. Lord, would you, God, would you allow us to be generous, Lord? God, we want to trust you with whatever we have, however little or however much. God, we want to trust you. God, not for ourselves, but because we want to live to bless others because you were generous, Lord, giving us everything, God, so that we could have life, so that we could give back to others. God, so as we trust you, as we step out in this act of worship, of, of giving back to you, to showing honor to you, God, would you bless that and cause it to multiply? God, would you multiply it, God, here in this space for ministry, for reaching the lost, God, for touching the world? God, would you multiply, God, by our trust in you, God, our ability to be generous to others? God, so we bless you, we bless the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. So I had this whole message planned out tonight about sharing on humility, and I had all these points, and then on, uh, and that's important to have humility. You know, we need that. That's one of the greatest attributes of Jesus and his believers. And so Monday night, I'm going to bed, and I start listening to a guy named Randy Clark, and he's sharing at the Anaheim Vineyard. And he's sharing about all of these testimonies of people that had radical encounters from the Lord. And there's a lot of times he says that we can judge a book by its cover. And they, they have a radical encounter or manifestation. And we can be like, ah, I don't know if that was really God. Um, were they kind of faking it? But he was sharing about looking at the fruit after the encounter. And what God does after those powerful, even manifestations where maybe someone gets really, really intoxicated on his presence for four hours. And instead of saying, oh, they're just kind of being emotional, it's what, it, what has happened after that encounter. And, you know, just like Jacob, when he wrestled with God at night, you know, if someone said, hey, how did you sleep last night? And they said, yeah, you know, I didn't go to bed. I was wrestling with the Lord all night. Well, that'd be kind of hard to believe. Like, you were wrestling with God? And then he goes, yeah. And then he gave me a new name. You know, like, what if he had to tell his wife, yeah, you're not going to call me Jacob anymore. You're going to call me Israel. The wife's probably thinking, you're kind of crazy. And then he goes, yeah. And then I got a limp in my step now, so I walk with a limp. I mean, that's true swagger is walking. When the Lord encounters you and you have a different strut, that's a different strut right there. Um, but, and I just really wanted to honor um, 
like just the way, I love how we're different for a reason. Like we all have different gifts and talents and Bob is a minister of the word and amazing teacher and, you know, and I love to minister the word and the Holy Spirit. And so, and he does too, but it's like staying in our assignment and our lane is so important. And you can't have the ear tell the eye, you got to do this. And so being in your calling and your anointing is the key and not trying to be like someone else. You know, don't wear Saul's armor. Just be, you're the most anointed when you're yourself. And so, you know, so there's a lot of bread on Sunday and there's wine on Wednesday, and they call it Wine Wednesday, so I like that, Wine Wednesday. And um, if you don't like the wine, the joy of his presence, then this is probably not the best place for you guys to be, okay? You could be more, you know, sober and, you know, somewhere else. But, um, and so, yeah, he, I just want to share some testimonies, and this is see what the Lord wants to do tonight. In 1995, I believe, the Toronto Blessing happened, and he was one of the first ministers there. The first night, he ends up praying for a lady named Carol, and there's 120 people there. He prays for this lady named Carol, and she goes, un- she goes out under the power of God. The power of God hit her, and she goes down. And, you know, so he walks the other, the other way, and the Lord says, go back and pray for her again. And tell her that you've been depressed for way too long and take another drink. And so he tells her, hey, you've been depressed for way too long, take another drink. And the Holy Spirit comes upon her so strong that she starts getting, she starts laughing and she can't even stand up. She's under the anointing, under the presence. And so that's happening. And he goes, okay, praise God. He ends up coming back to Toronto here and there. And every time he sees Carol, he notices that she is inebriated, intoxicated in God's presence. So he starts saying, huh, okay, that happened in the beginning. But now every time I see her, she's drunk in the Holy Spirit. Is she faking it? You know, what happened in the spirit is now she's trying to act out in the flesh. And so he starts judging her. But then he gets an email from her and said, when you prayed for me the first time in Toronto, I had an incurable disease. I had chronic depression and chronic pain. When I got drunk in the Holy Spirit, the pain left. I got fully healed, and I got healed of depression from that encounter. Not only that, there was a healing anointing that got deposited in her life. So she says, Lord, I surrender. I want to do the ministry. And there's crickets here, so. <laughs> and so anyways, <laughs> that was funny timing. I like that. I'll t- every five minutes, do that one. That'd be cool. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's good. And so anyways, it started with being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Say, go pray for her again. Tell her that she's been depressed for too long and take another drink from his presence. So anyways, she tells him that she had gone to Scandinavia and she was ministering. And there was a lady in the front row who was pregnant and she was about to give birth. And so she started praying over the womb and said, I bless the baby in Jesus' name. I bless the purposes of God for the baby. But she didn't know that three days prior, the doctor had just told the mother that she was going to have to give a stillborn birth, that it actually died. And so she had no idea. She was saying, I bless the baby in Jesus' name and the purposes of God. And so she doesn't know at all. No one tells her. Two years later, she comes back to that same church and sees a two-year-old toddler running around. And the mother says, this is the woman of God that prayed for you in the womb that you came alive again. And hugs the, you know, the minister. And so the reason why I want to share that is because sometimes we see someone getting really, really touched by God. Or maybe we think maybe they're just kind of faking it. She got really drunk in the Holy Spirit. And that's what, that's the fruit of that what happened. And so before we, we judge, like, I don't want to grieve the Lord 
and maybe he is doing something. Maybe people are being, what they're faking it, but I would rather fake being happy and fake laughter than staying in depression and staying in, in gloom, you know? So I don't think God's looking down and saying, oh my gosh, they're just trying to be happy. I don't think he's getting mad. I think he's like, wow, they're making an effort for joy. You know, like they're, they're going after it. And so, you know, there's some more testimonies I do want to share. That's just one. And I was just getting stirred up. And I was like, Lord, what you did, you know, in Toronto and different places, like do it again here. Like God wants to not just hear for us to hear about it, for that to happen again with us, like even tonight. And so as we share these testimonies, it's like seeds that are being planted and, and just being like, okay, God, I receive it. You know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which means do it again. Um, there's another testimony where there was a guy that drove four hours to go to a Randy Clark meeting, and he was really hungry, and he was going to go to a Muslim country to become a missionary. So he's at, he just wants a powerful encounter, impartation. So he's in line at the end of the service, and Randy goes over to him and simply just says, I bless you in Jesus' name. Doesn't feel anything at all. He simply puts his thumb on his palm and says, I bless, that's kind of an interesting way to pray for someone. And he says, I bless you in Jesus' name. He doesn't feel anything. He says, God, I came all this way and nothing happened. And then right when he's kind of complaining to the Lord, he starts feeling heat in his hands. And he's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> He ends up going to the Muslim country, and the people that were supporting him couldn't support him anymore, so he was there by faith, alone. And so, in that country, if you pray for the wrong, the person that ends up being the wrong person, your life's in severe jeopardy. And so, but he would know who to pray for because he would feel fire, he'd feel heat on his hands, and every time he felt heat on his hands, he would pray for that person, and they would get healed. And so he was protected because the Holy Spirit would highlight certain people to pray for that were the right people, and they would get healed on the spot, and then give their life to Jesus. And so that happened because one person said, I bless you in Jesus' name. And so just because we don't have a radical encounter, receiving a prayer like I bless you in Jesus' name could be a life-changing prayer. And it sounds really simple, but that was an anointing that he had that protected him in a Muslim country. Um, I got a couple testimonies of, a, of two different Marcellos. So if your name is Marcelo, you're in good hands. I don't know, this Marcelo keeps getting encountered by the Lord. Um, let me do, let's see, <clears throat> Marcelo, he was a Baptist pastor friend, and he goes to a Randy Clark meeting again, and it's about 12 a.m., and he's really hungry for more of God, and Randy's already prayed for him twice, and he goes to him a third time, hey, pray for me again, and Randy says, I've already prayed for you twice, you need to probably go home. And he goes, yeah, but Rodney Howard Brown prayed for you five times. So you can pray for me again. <laughs> okay? Remember that one. If you go to a pastor and need more prayer. Hey, but. Um, so he prays for him again, and the power of God hits him so strong, it looks, he just knocks against the wall, like heavy. It looked like an angel, like punched him in the stomach, and he flies back. And he's under the power of God. And. Then Randy starts prophesying over him and says, tomorrow at church, because he was a Baptist preacher, I want you to pray healing over everyone in the church. And they don't do that. He wasn't doing that. That wasn't a normal thing. And so he prays for all the people in church. They get healed. And even a woman with stage four cancer gets healed right there on the spot. And so we can look on the outward and, well, that guy, well, maybe he pretended to fall back or he's getting very dramatic well that's some of the fruit of an encounter when someone gets hit so hard by the power of God the next day it doesn't matter what denomination you're in God doesn't care he can touch anyone at any time and the fruit of that is people get healed even stage four cancer um I kind of want to save one of the best ones for last this one 
This is going to take some time, but it's good. So I'm going to go slow on this one. The other guy named Marcelo. Um, and you know what? I'm going to move this out a little bit, actually. There we go. Ooh. No walls here. No. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like I got to get, like, okay. So this guy named Marcelo, he's another Baptist guy, and he goes to a meeting. He's at a Pentecostal church service, and everyone is raising their hands. They're being loud, and, and he's being critical of the meeting. He goes, how come everyone is so loud here? How come they can't just be still and know that you're God? How, you know, he was telling God that. He was complaining. And he goes, yeah, those people over there, they're shaking, and that's not real. And so he's being very critical. And as he's literally judging people in the service, the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and his right leg starts shaking like this. And it's shaking, and it's shaking. And he was the guy that was judging people that were shaking. And he goes, oh, my gosh. And he, start, he tries to stop his leg from shaking, but it can't. It keeps going. And it's going for, like, it, not just for five minutes. He tries to drive home that night, but since that's the gas pedal, it's doing this, so he can't drive home. He had to get someone else to drive him home to the house because he's doing this. You know, and so anyways, that he goes back again, but he's still being critical. He's still kind of like... Yeah, that did happen, but I think they're still maybe, you know, kind of being judgmental. This time, as he's kind of being critical again, the Holy Spirit comes upon him so strong that he gets knocked out in the spirit. He's gone. He's unconscious. The power of God hits him so powerfully, and he can't be critical now because he's gone. You know, he's having an encounter. You know, if God, if, if we start coming against what God is doing. God knows how to get our attention. He can knock us, you know, do whatever it takes. And anyways, so they had to carry him to the car and drive him to his house, carry him upstairs into his bed, and then he's gone still. He, he doesn't wake up till 10 in the morning the next day. And so last night, he's in a meeting, worshiping, or maybe being critical, the next morning, he wakes up in his bed. He's like, what the heck happened, you know? And he wakes up at 10 a.m., and he, he can't stop weeping. He's just crying. For three days and three nights, he's just weeping. And it's the love of God that's coming upon him. And he's crying, and he's crying, and it's for three days and three nights. And, and so anyways, he goes to the butcher shop to get, you know, like meat or whatever, and he gets a word of knowledge for the butcher. The, the butcher gets healed right there on the spot. This has never happened before for him. He's never done a word of knowledge or any healing. This is all new. Then he goes to the bakery, and there's a woman in line, and he gets a word of knowledge for her, and then she gets healed on the spot. So he's thinking, maybe those encounters that I had were pretty significant. A couple months later... Randy Clark sees him again, maybe a year later, and says, how's it been since you had that encounter? What's been going on? And he goes, I've seen 120 blind eyes healed, 130 deaf ears here, and over 100 people get up out of their wheelchair and healed. And he, so maybe there's a little bit of fruit from a guy that got encountered by God that his right leg was shaken one night and the next night he goes under the power of God and has to get carried to his car and then to his house. And so he then sees him again in Brazil in a stadium of about 25,000 people and he was the hungriest one there still. He was still hungry for more of God. Like he had these encounters with the Lord but he still wanted more. And he noticed this guy is hungry. And he asked him again, so what's been happening since? And he goes, the Lord told me after 500 to stop counting. And he said like 500 total of like maybe 200 this, 200 this, and 100. And he goes, or and then he asked, or 500 of each. He goes, the louder. So 500, over 500 blind eyes and deaf ears have been healed and the lame walking 
And so, you know, just honoring that a lot of times we look at someone that has a manifestation and we're like, oh, I don't know about that. But to really steward his presence and say, God, like, I want to honor you no matter what it looks like. I want, I want to encounter you. Like, even if I look like a fool, I want more of you, Jesus. And sometimes, you know, especially in the Western, you know, church, we can be so used to a really neat Bible study and a really neat service. But if we're asking for more of God and for a revival to hit us, for the fire of God to come, you know, it's really hard to hold on to like electrical wire and not manifest at all. It's hard to hold on to electrical wire that's alive and well and be like, yeah, I'm doing okay. You know, so we're asking for the power of God. And a lot of times it's a lot easier to read about miracles and, and the power of God. But when it starts happening now, it's like that sometimes when our intellect can get in the way of God's miraculous power. And like if we really want more of the Lord, sometimes we do look like a fool. But it doesn't matter what our intellect says. It's God, whatever it looks like, I want more of you. You know, if Moses, like if, let's just say you're hanging out with Moses and, you know, he goes, yeah, there was this bush that was on fire, but it didn't stop. It just kept burning and burning. And then it started talking to me. You're probably thinking that's pretty crazy. That's a little foolish, you know, or like, for example, even Jesus walking on water. And you're like, so a lot of the miracles that happen they don't make sense to our intellect, but that's how God gets our heart. Like you look at, a, like I could just go through the scriptures and be like, yeah, Jesus, you know, he, he took some mud and spat in it and then put it on a blind eye. Like that would offend me if my eyes are blind and he spits in his hands. And so it's more important about choosing the anointing over just respectability. And obviously we want to honor people, but I want to honor the Holy Spirit more than just trying to make sure everyone's okay. You know, if, I, if I'm more concerned about not offending people, then I don't know if God's miraculous power is going to really come heavy. You know, if, if just being honest, if, I, if we pray right now and my right leg starts shaking, and you're like, I don't know, this guy's a little weird. But the fruit of that, this guy gets a huge healing gift on his life, and hundreds and hundreds of people are impacted by one encounter from the Lord. And so, you know, that's what I really wanted to pray. I don't want to go too much longer, um, but I really just wanted to pray that for us, that, you know, we have the his gentle whisper. You know, we have that communion with him. He's always with us wherever we go. And I believe there's a lot of people that have been hungering for more of the Lord. But he, he wants to encounter us more than we want to encounter him. And just to realize that. And if you haven't had a huge marking, that doesn't make you any less spiritual or you haven't missed the mark. Actually, sometimes I think people that have these heavy encounters probably need it more than others. Um, but I do believe like what God reveals to the body, he wants to make available for others that he doesn't just play favorites for some and be like, yeah, I'll just touch him, but not her, you know? And, you know, one of God's love languages is physical touch, like to feel his presence. Like I know we hear so often like, hey, just walk by faith, you know, no, no emotions. But that'd be weird, like you're in a relationship and you can never, like, no physical touch ever. Or it's like, yeah, you just, nope, no emotions, hey, nope. And sometimes we hear that in church, but God wants to physically touch us with his presence, with his power, with his anointing, where yes, we're walking by faith, I, we understand that, but that's his love language too. And we can't take that from the Lord because that's his. And if he wants to touch us with the fire of the Lord or just his liquid love, like that's his desire. He's a personal God. He's not far off somewhere, you know. And there was, I got actually just a couple quick more testimonies. But uh, 
There was two uh, doctors in Singapore, and they came up for prayer. And, you know, very logical and very smart. And they got touched by the power of God. They go back to their practice, and their patients are getting healed in their practice. They're doing the same thing, but the anointing, the presence of the Lord is healing the patients. So sometimes we think, well, it has to be in church. No, God wants to encounter us, but then bring it to the workplace bring it to the school, the education, like it's not about just in the church. What God does here, he wants to go everywhere. In our homes, I mean, sometimes I've seen the most, like, healing happen just around the dinner table than anything, you know. Um, But this one I want to end on, and this was a lady that got prayed for by Randy Clark, and this was at a cell-based church. So if you're not a cell leader, you weren't really considered much of anything. And that was like the denomination. And anyways, so he prays for all the pastors, all of the cell leaders. And he prays, and she's one of them that's like kind of like a lowly one, you know, like kind of forgotten about. And he, like the next night, he asked the head pastor, hey, so who got touched? What happened? And he goes, that woman you prayed for got the strongest anointing out of everyone you prayed for. Out of all the, the pastors and leaders, she's not even a cell leader, and she got the greatest anointing. And the Lord spoke to Randy and said, I can encounter anyone at any time. It's not according to their merit according to their performance, according to their track record, that God just want, can encounter anyone. And a lot of times, he likes to encounter the least expected people, the people that would be like, there's no way that God can encounter that person. you know, Or maybe the biggest past, God says, I'm going after you. And so don't let your past disqualify you from encountering more of the Lord. Um, and there is something about these people that like, there's like this perseverance that said, pray for me again. I want more. Pray for me again. Like there's one side of the coin. God can encounter anyone, even the critic, the guy that was judging the meeting. But the other side of the coin is God responds to hunger and the ones that are hungry and persevering, pray for me again, pray for me again. Or Jacob, when he tells God, you're not, you're not going to leave. I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me, until you encounter me. There's something about hungering and you hold on until you get the encounter. And Randy Clark, the guy that had all these testimonies, I don't know if I really recommend doing this, but he told the Lord, I'm not going to eat until you encounter me. <laughs> so make sure you guys stay alive, please. <laughs> that's, talk, that's talking about real hunger. Um, and so I just feel like as we, we pray for the harvest, as we pray for like revival, God, we need to encounter him if we to give anything to the, to the world, like to the broken and the dying and the non-believers. If we're not encountering him, we have nothing to give back, you know? So like we hear like, Hey, go evangelize and go prophesy and go pray for people, which we need to do. But if I'm not receiving from him, I got nothing to give to others. And, and so that's what I just want to pray for tonight, for everyone here. And if you're not excluded, and, you know, it, like th- my favorite part is that guy that was being critical and say, that person's faking it. And God chose him. And so that's called negative faith, that God said, boom, okay. He was being critical. And all you need is a mustard seed of faith. I mean, God could even use negative faith, but a mustard seed of faith. And I'm believing that God's going to just encounter people. And maybe you get a seed that you get tonight, but as you go home, as you drive home, as you have a, you go to sleep tonight, maybe you have a powerful encounter or a dream. Um, but I, I'm just praying for more. I want more. I want more of the Lord. I do want more. You know, it's, I haven't heard the crickets phone in a while. <laughs> that would have been a good time. Huh? You go for it. 
Okay, this has been weighing on my heart for a few weeks, and the Lord was just pressing in on me on right here. So 10 years ago, I decided to go to YWAM and do a DTS with them, and about a month in, I'm on an a internet call with my mom, and she starts telling me stuff that's going on at home, and it started to get heavy. She, started, she was losing her hair. My youngest sister, uh, she was doing things she shouldn't have been at a young age, and uh, the person I was wanting to be with when I came home was just in a really bad way, and she just let all this information on me, and I'm like, Mom, I'm coming home. I've been here a month. I've totally got everything I need, you know, I on fire for the Lord. I'm like, I'm coming home to help because I, I felt like I needed to come, and I got off the phone, and I was just weeping with my friends. There was about six of us. And um, I was sharing with them everything that, that was going on. And, and so later on that night, someone was like, hey, we're going to go to the mountain and pray. And I was like, I need to go. I need to go with you guys. So we went with one of the leaders. And where they took us was we were in New Zealand. So being in the mountains in New Zealand is, like, way different than the mountains here because they're just, well, it's New Zealand. They're crazy beautiful. So we go to this place, and we drive up as far as we can, and we hike. This is dark in the middle of the night and um I just felt it in my spirit just to cry out so I mean everything within me I screamed at the top of my lungs I was mad I was mad that the enemy was going after my family while I was gone I couldn't be there or do anything physically or pray for them nothing so I was pretty angry and I was just God you got to do something so as we're we're all praying and you know some of us are yelling and I know I'm the loudest one they're all looking at me like I'm crazy and I'm like no I'm here to do something I'm, I'm here to do something and so as I'm looking down the hill this cloud starts coming up the mountain a full cloud and I'm like you guys you see this somebody you see this and they're like yeah and then we're all stopping we're watching this cloud climb up the mountain towards us we're like, what do we do? So this cloud circles us. I kid you not. There was about six other people with us who can testify to this. This cloud circles us. And so we just huddle and we just pray. We're just praying hard. We just don't know what to do. So we're like, okay, this cloud, like, is this God? And so when we lift up, there's no clouds in the sky and the moon is shining and we can see the tops of other hills. There's probably about like eight other hills. They're all dark. There's no clouds in the sky. And the only hill that's lit is the one that we're standing on. Okay? I mean, in your brain, you're looking at it and you're like, how is this possible? How is this possible? Um, so when you go after, when you're contending and you want something from the Lord, and you really give it your all, I mean, all that you got, whether it's your voice or your dance or your art or whatever it is, you know, that you're going after the Lord for, he shows up. He shows up. And sometimes in a cloud, sometimes in a shaking, sometimes in a, in a way different way. You know, but I'm telling you, go after it. Contend. Do that. You know, like Jacob did. He's like, no, I'm not going to leave until you touch me. I'm not going to leave. And that's what's going on in my heart. And he showed up. You know, and that's here today, and that's here right now. And, and I know there's people in this room who God's been pulling on you to contend, you know, and that it matters, and that your time that you give to him to contend for someone else, he honors that, and he blesses that, you know, so much. And I can tell you that from that trip and from that time, you know, my mom met the Holy Spirit for the first time when I came home, and, you know, my sister, she's... Uh, she got baptized and accepted Jesus just a month ago, um, you know, so there, there's fruit that came from out of that, you know, and that God has touched these people, you know, and they're all in a better way now. Amen. Yeah. That's so, cool. sure. wow. so, yeah, I just want to um, do a corporate prayer and then we will be released. And then if you guys want more, we're going to have leaders up here and we're going to pray. And maybe you start feeling, yeah, one second. Maybe you start feeling just like weeping, like God is in the morning. Maybe you start feeling inexpressible joy. God's in the joy. Maybe you, you have just like you're feeling just his presence or heat. There could be a healing anointing being released. And so what people are not aware of, it's hard for God to do things if we're not open to all the ways he wants to encounter us. 
And if you feel nothing at all, it's by faith, too, we receive. Okay, so let's just have everyone stand up, and then I'm feeling the anointing right now. Whew. I'm feeling like pretty inebriated, so wow. Just Can you just strum a little bit? Okay. So the whole point of all those testimonies is actually for right now what the Lord wants to do. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're here and that you're no respecter of persons. And so, Lord, what you've done for others, God, we ask that you would do today, tonight, and that you would meet them where they need to be met, not just where they're expecting you to come. And God, we just lay down any expectations of how you're supposed to reveal yourself. If we always expect you in the joy, maybe he wants to meet us in mourning. But if we always expect him in mourning, maybe he wants to touch us in joy. Or maybe you feel like, well, I don't really feel his presence that much. We'll expect to start feeling his presence. Or you never felt his heat, maybe on your hands even right now. And so, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your presence that's here. Yeah, we just ask that you would just touch people with your love. We just say yes to your joy. We say yes to your mourning. We say yes to your stillness. We say yes to your dancing. Yeah. We say yes to your inebriation. Yeah, so Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would just pour out your presence on your people right now. And we just thank you that you're not far off. They actually dwell inside of us. Mm-hmm.